you know, for today's lecture, we are to deal with the uh, full explication of uh, Walter de la Mer's poem, The Listeners, which is really uh, a ballad, which is uh, a poem that is written in the form of a story following the Georgian uh, elements of poetry, following the elements of the Georgian school of poetry that we explained in the previous lecture. So, uh, in fact, you know, since the poem deals with the story, so definitely it will be so much interesting to you as readers. So, um, please, you know, focus with me on the uh, analysis of the of the uh, lines of the poem, because we will, for this lecture, we are not only to deal with the general meanings, okay, well, not only the, you know, uh, thematic studies of the poems, because uh, since this is a ballad, as we said, since the form of the poem is a ballad because it tells a story, a narrative story, it, it is, uh, you know, uh, belonging to the type of poetry that is narrative poetry, so we have to go uh, minutely in detail to the, you know, full analysis of the lines of poetry, line by line. Okay, so first of all, uh, I will present to you a summary of the uh, poem, uh, the, the listeners, uh, before this, let me present the slides in front of you so that you can refer to them for the sake of ease of use. Okay, now we will have the slides in front of you so that you can refer to them. Wait a minute, please. Okay, so now uh, you will have the slides of the lecture, please. The first thing you will see is uh, a picture, okay? This picture, uh, please. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, this picture, as you see, please, I want you to live inside of this forest. I need to inside of this forest. And I want you to use your imagination. Please, to use your imagination to the utmost and utmost degree and extent that you can. So that I want you also not only to live inside of this forest, but also to go inside of this house that you see in front of you. Now, this picture is giving you a full image of the poem that we will live in. This picture, uh, this portrait will give you, uh, you know, uh, the setting of the poem itself, okay? This is the setting. The poem, the whole story of the poem will take place here, inside of this uh, uh, forest during the midnight, okay? And you see that this forest is a deserted one, is a secluded one, is a lonely one. And also, you look at this house, okay? What is strange about this house is that, number one, okay, you know, it is, it is deserted, okay? No one is living there, but it is supposedly deserted. But if you look here, you will see that in this window, if you see, okay, follow the cursor, please. So, there are lights that are coming out of this window, only this window in the whole house. So everything is dark, but things are only, lights are only coming from this, uh, you know, window, only one window in this house. So everything is looking uh, deserted. Everything is looking in seclusion, in loneliness. Uh, you know, abandoned, everything is abandoned. Fachi, the forest is, is deserted, where also the house is deserted. So everything is deserted. Kulshi Mahjur inside of this place and inside of this setting. So uh, the first point I, which I want you to know about is that, uh, number one, don't forget that we are explaining, we are analyzing a, a poem that is written by a Georgian poet whose name is Walter de la Mer. Okay, this Walter de la Mer, if you remember from the previous lecture, we said we explained something about his life, his style, etc. So, also we dealt with the, uh, you know, features, characteristics, elements, traits of what? Of the Georgian school of poetry. And we should never forget that the Georgian school of poetry is a traditional in everything. 
Traditional uh, Georgian poets, just like Walter Dilema, are traditional in themes, in content, in form, in the structure, in the techniques, and even in the words that the poet will choose inside of his poem. So Georgian poetry is fully traditional. And the reason behind this, if you still remember, we said, and I'll repeat again to refresh your minds before starting with the poem, that modernist poetry started to suffer from experimentation. Modern poets, all the schools of poetry that we have studied before, they made so much experimentations, a great number of experimentations in the form, in the themes, in the techniques, in the words, in the images, in the symbols of, of, of poetry, so that up to the extent, because they wanted as T.S. Eliot said, as Ezra Pound said, they wanted to break the pentameter, they wanted to make it anew, they wanted to make their poetry to, to be suitable, to be a mirror, to, the, to be a reflection and representation of the age, of the fragmentation of the society they were living in, a uh, representation and a mirror of the catastrophes, the alienation, the anxiety, the, the dilemmas, the, the maladies, the sicknesses, the diseases they were living in in the modern society. Okay, so uh, this had really a consequence on readers. So readers, modern readers, started to, to abandon, just like this house is abandoned, just like this forest is abandoned, okay, and deserted. Modern readers started to desert, to abandon reading poetry, and they started to like reading novels and drama more than poetry. So the Georgians, Georgian poets, I mean, they uh, wanted to make poetry to be traditional so that they will let people to escape from the problems of life. They wanted their readers to get rid. They wanted to, to make their readers forget the fragmentation, the anxiety, the problems, generally the maladies, the, the disasters of the modern society while they, were, they will be coming to read their poetry. So they said this is their notion. They said that we live in, in the problems. We live in a very complicated, complex type of life and society. Okay, So we should never, under any condition, we should never come again to, 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 uh, you know, to speak about the same problems and the same complications and the same you know, uh, bad consequences and negative consequences of life inside of our poems. Let our poems talk about something else. Let our poems be traditional. Let us take our readers back in time to enjoy the, the beauty and the sweetness of the past, okay? While the society, while life was easy, generally. While life was simple, okay? So it is not logical for Georgian poets to live in a complicated society and we, to come again in literature to write poetry or novels or dramas or short stories or any type of literature, any genre of literature to come again to speak about the problems and the complications that we see every day in our life. So according to their notions, according to the elements of the uh, Georgian school of poetry and their you know, uh, characteristic features, they said that they have chosen the traditional, the conventional side of, of poetry and they were really, for a short period of time, yes, but they were really successful in in winning readers for, for their side, in winning readers, modern readers again, they were able to again draw the attention of the modern readers to come to read poetry uh, more than novels and, and drama. Okay, so use your imagination, please. We will go now, uh, from now, to the end of the poem, to the end of the lecture of today. We will be living inside of this forest and inside of this deserted, abandoned house, okay? So, first of all, we go to the title of the poem itself. Look, at the title. Titles are always important in poetry, specifically. Because poetry is compact. novel, not like drama, okay? So even if we have sometimes long poems, but they are not more than you know not not longer than novels not as long as novels not not and never as long as dramas you know so we have now poems that are written with one page two pages three pages etc i mean maximum 10 etc yes we have exceptions yeah 
But I'm talking about the general rule. Poetry is compact. The amal shi'ar mazghut, mukhtasar. Okay. So because it is compact, so every word should be placed in its most suitable place. لازم كل كلمة أخليها مكانها المضبوط تماما. And each word should contribute to the development of the course of the poem. وكل كلمة لازم تسهم تطور قصة القصيدة. Okay, so every word is important, every word is significant, and I have, as a poet, I have to pay attention to everything that I use, by everything I mean, the content, the form, the words, the images, the figures of speech, uh, everything, the, even the words that I'm using inside of my poem. Okay, so, because of this now, uh, titles in poetry, in poems, are very important. Okay, because titles in general, whether it is poetry or not, are supposed to give us a hint, to give us a gist, to give us an indication, or to give us a summary or a synopsis of what is to follow. Okay, so they are supposed to give us, you know, uh, a, a hint of what is, what is important inside of the poem that is to be discussed by the poet or to be mentioned by the poet and to be followed by his readers. Okay, so then if we look at the title of this poem, the listeners, okay, we are to notice so many very important, significant, pivotal, and focal ideas and notions that are only gained by us only from the title, even before we go to dig deep inside of the ideas that are mentioned by this poem, Walter de la Mer in his poem. So, look at the title now. The title says that we have a poem that is entitled or named the listeners okay so number one what we gain from this title number one important significant idea is that the poem is to deal with listeners so we have inside of this poem we will read a story that is dealing that is having so many characters so many of these characters are listeners okay so we have a poem that is that is written about listeners characters inside of the poem will be listeners so listeners this is one we will deal with listeners سامعين فقط. so we know that listeners never speak two listeners is in the plural form not singular listeners with s Okay, which is number two, an indication that we will have a host, a group of characters who are just listening without saying even a word. Okay, so number one, we are to deal with listeners. Number two, listeners are in the plural form, so listeners are never speaking. Number two, we will have not only one listener, but a host, a great number. Host means a great number. A big group, a huge group of listeners, and all these listeners will be just listening, okay, without even saying a word. This is two. Three, then listeners come with a definite article, the listeners, okay? So this means that when I have something that is written with a definite article, okay, the, this means that these listeners are identified, they are none by someone, okay? So they are none. They are not strange characters. They are not strange humans. They are not uh, foreign, they are not alien characters, for example, okay? So the listeners means, since we have a definite article there, so these people who are the listeners, these characters, these characters who are the listeners, they are identified and they are none. None for whom? This is number four. Since I have listeners, so definitely I will have a speaker or a speakers. Madam and the listeners, so definitely a kuahid who is a speaker or a group of speakers. Okay? So those listeners, because they have the, okay, the definite article, so they are identified and they are none to one, to whom? To the speaker inside of this poem. Okay, so then
total of this poem only. So all these five poems are the functions of the title of the listeners. Okay, Walter Dinamer's poem, the listeners. Number five, the last one is what is, you know, let me, uh, you know, uh, uh, facilitate the idea to you or make it easy to you. You know, titles, when I mention uh, characters or something in the title, this means that what is mentioned in the title is more important than what is not mentioned in the title. So, definitely, logically, reasonably, the speaker should be more important than the listeners. Yes? Now, someone who is always speaking, someone who is, uh, you know, speaking for a long period of time and even for a short period of time. So this is a speaker. So logically, reasonably, بالعقل, and this speaker is more important than the listeners because the listeners are not doing anything. They are not even speaking. They are just listening. Okay? They are not even moving. Okay? So, uh, in contrast to this, paradoxically enough, surprisingly enough, the poet has told us through or via the title that the listeners in this poem will be more significant, more pivotal, more important than the speaker. Okay? So, five points which are uh, related to the functions of the title of this poem. Okay. Now, if we go to the poem itself, first of all, let me give you a, a, a synopsis, a, a summary of the story of this poem so that you can understand me while I will move to the analysis of the lines uh, one by one so that you can understand the full story of this poem and to judge. This is what I want from you. As readers, as students, is to judge at the end of the poem if that poem was really traditional, was it really applicable or labeled under the Georgian school of poetry or it is not suitable to be called, uh, or it is not, you know, labeled under the Georgian school of poetry. Is it a traditional? Is it really conventional or not? So, this poem, you know, uh, has an unnamed figure who is a traveler. So, this is a traveler, if you notice from the beginning, we have just a mention of that man. And even at the beginning, we don't know if this is a man. But in line number three, the poet told us that, and his horse... So from this his, his, we know then that this traveler is a man. But what is the name of this traveler? We don't know. What is the physical description of this traveler? We don't know. What is or what are the personality traits of this man? Nothing is mentioned about this man. What we know about him only is that a man from his, okay? And we all we only know that he is a traveler, someone who is a traveler, okay? So this figure, this traveler, this man is not, is unnamed, is not ident identified, is not known to us, okay? So look again at the contrast, look again at the paradox. Those listeners who are supposed to be secondary, they are given with their listeners, their listeners, okay? So they are identified. While the speaker, who is the only one, the only one character who is speaking inside of this poem, we don't know anything about him. Just a traveler. So who is that traveler? What is his name? Uh, from where he has come to this place, Ninja, he lives, where, where, where does he live? Why is he here? Okay? What is the message that he is coming to deliver? Okay, who are these listeners? What he will tell them? Does he know them? Are they strangers? Are they his friends? Are they living? Are they dead? Is there anybody inside of the house? Uh, is there nobody inside of the house? So all these are questions that are left without answers because we don't know anything as introductions. This poem starts directly, okay, without without introductions okay so uh, what i mean by without intro introductions is that we haven't seen before the beginning of the poem the poem that they didn't start with the man while he he uh, departed from his house 
اول ما انطلق من بيته وايل هي امباركت اون وايل هي ستارتد وايل هي بيجان هيز جيرني اوكي نو ذا بوم ذا ديدنت ستارت وذ ا ديسكريبشن اوف ذا مان ذا ترافلر نو ذا بوم ديدنت ستارت وذ ذا نيم ايفن اوف ذات مان اوكي it didn't start also not, neither with what with the the message that he is coming to deliver so everything is vague everything is not obvious everything is not told to us so the only thing that is told to us is that we have a traveler who will come to knock on a certain door and he will knock the door of a deserted house and for three times no one will answer him and he will come back at the end of the poem to the same place he came from what is that place why he came here why no one is answering him what what is the message he is coming to deliver he will tell us at the end of the poem tell them that i came and kept my word who are these them to be told that this man is, has come here and what is this and i kept my word what promise is this شنو حافظت على كلمتي شنو حافظت على الوعد مالتي what promise is this what word is this so what i say is that all these details are not mentioned because the poet wants to tell you that i have started directly with the story of the poem without introductions this is what. two he wanted to tell you that i have started with what is important to the development of the story of the poem so the name of the man is not important that is why it's not mentioned his residence sakana is not important who is that man what is the message etc all these are not mentioned so this unnamed figure the traveler knocks on the door of a house in the moonlight and asks if there if there's any anyone inside of the house the traveler's horse he has a horse and this is what is called in poetry or literature to be anachronism anachronism means so we live in the 20th century huh this poem a georgian school of poetry is a school of poetry that started in and ended in the 20th century so what's important to us that poem this poem the listeners was composed by walter de Lama during the 20th century so we live in the 20th century but still we have a traveler who came to ride a horse not a car not on train not even a bicycle but this man comes what riding a horse so this is the first indication from the beginning of the poem that traditionalism conventionalism will be everywhere inside of the poem traditional words Conventional images will be scattered here and there inside of the poem from the beginning to the end. Okay? Our indication in Nuhindi, in Nuhai al Qasida, traditional, conventional, I have made the man, the main character of my poem, the traveler, to be coming to this house, to be coming to this forest, riding a horse. So I went back to the Middle Ages. I went back to the romantic period of time. So, if you still remember, I told you in the previous lecture that with Georgian poetry, it is so much similar, their themes, their techniques, the school of poetry is so much similar to the romantic school of poetry. So, this man, now the traveler's horse, grazes while eating in the quiet forest while the traveler waits for a response. Then, a bird flies out of a small tower on the house and over the traveler's head. The traveler knocks again more forcefully for a second time and repeats his question. Is there anybody there? The same question for a second time. No one even leans out of the window, the sill of which is covered in leaves to look at him. His or he stands in, in a place, in the same place in the forest. He was puzzled, he was confused by the lack of an answer. No one was answering him. Okay? So then, if you look at these. Uh, you know lines the first four lines of this poem which say uh, you know is there anybody there said the traveler this is the the question you remember the overwhelming question of of alfred prophrock 
in the love song of Jay Allen for the Puff Frog. This is really an overwhelming question, not the question of Puff Frog. Okay? So, this man has a message to be delivered. He came to this place for a logical, reasonable reason. But what is that? We don't know. So, as I said before, the poem starts directly, without introductions, okay? Without a preface. It starts directly with the major, most important question of the poem. Is there anybody there? Said the traveler. It doesn't even start with a traveler. So, the poet didn't even start his poem with, there was a, tra a traveler who came to this forest and he was knocking on the door of this house, deserted house, to say, to ask this question, which is, is there anybody there? No. He started directly with the question, with the most important thing of this poem. Is there anybody there? Said the traveler. So, knocking on the moonlit door, he was knocking on a door and that door was lighted by the light of the moon. Moonlit, Mudaa, light of the moon, which is again moonlit. It is again, it will take us back to the medieval times, it will take us back to the Gothic times, to the Romantic times, and even to Victorian, to the Victorian age, because the Victorian age was so famous in, in the Gothic elements. Gothic elements, just like you see horror movies, مثل أفلام الرعب. Okay, so we have a deserted village inside of a, a, a secluded uh, forest in the midnight and no one is there. Okay, there is someone who is, I don't know who, who is that man who will come to knock on the door to ask a question, is there anybody there? And the door was lighted by the moon, not by the sun, which is an indication that this, in, this is, we live in the setting, we live inside of the night, in the midnight. Okay, so all these are Gothic supernatural elements, Gothic elements. Fearful elements, okay? So, and his horse, the horse of that man, in the silence, champed, was eating the grass of the forest's ferny floor, the floor of the forest that is full of grass and ferns, okay? So, then, the, these opening lines, as always, as I, I used to tell you, with even with Hamlet, while I, I taught you this in the uh, third year, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, opening lines in poetry form just like an introduction. So, yes, I started this poem directly, but I have given you an introduction not before these lines. I started with the most important question, but these four first four lines of the poem, they themselves form as an introduction to the poem. So, they have different sorts of functions. Okay, so what is the function of this line? These opening lines of the poem, they have these functions. Number one, they introduce, uh, uh, please, they introduce the poem's main character, who is the traveler. main character, okay, the traveler. Number two, they set the scene, these four lines, they set the scene, the scene of the poem, setting of the scene of the poem. And three, they pose the question that is central to the mystery of the story. They asked, the question, the most important and pivotal and focal question of the poem is here, inside of this uh, introduction, inside of this beginning, inside of these four opening lines. So the function or the functions of these four lines, of the opening lines of the poem are, again I'll repeat them, number one, to introduce the poem's main character, to set the scene, this is number two, and three, to pose to ask Yanni yani, the question that is central to the mystery of the story. Okay, so the subject of the poem is called simply, the main character is simply called the traveler. As I said, without a name, without any description, without any, uh, you know, traits or characteristics or features. All this would implies, okay, why this man is unidentified, is without a name, without a description. This implies, this means that his journeying is the most important thing to know about him. The journey is more important than the traveler, okay? That is why we are told everything about the journey, but we have never been told anything about the traveler or the man, which means, which is a clear indication, a crystal a clear idea and indication that, you know, uh, the journey is more important than the traveler himself, okay? So this man has come on horseback from some unknown location, 
into the scene. We don't know from where he has come, as I said before, into the scene of the poem. And immediately makes his presence without introductions. He made his presence none. Uh, now we know about his presence. We know that this man is here through what? By knocking on the door of a house and asking if anyone is there. Who told, who told us that th there is a man? We don't know anything about him. We don't know about his location. We don't know about the place he came from. W how we are aware of his presence, how we could know that there is a man here, uh, there is a traveler here, only from the knocking on the door and from asking the question. Again, an indication that the question, the journey is more important than the, the personality or the character of this uh, traveler. Okay? Then... Uh, the fact that the traveler here knocks on a moonlit door, again, is important, as I said before. The moonlit door, okay, uh, establishes the poem setting as a house at night. How could I know that we live during the night? Because I have this word, which is, I know that the door was lighted by, by the moonlight. It was lit by the moon. So I know that I am in the midnight, and also, uh, you know, the setting... Is, is inside, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, at night. The time is night. How could I know this? Because, uh, you know, the door was moonlit. And also the place is there is a house inside of a forest. How I know this again? Because the poet told me that there was a door that was lighted by or lit by the moonlight. Again, the ferny floor of, of line number four here, Okay, the ferny floor, which is the grassy floor, that is, يعني, uh, okay, the ferny floor, again, uh, tells me of the setting of the poem, that is the place of the poem, which is a forest, which is revealing that this house is located in old. So the first four lines, again, as I said in number two, they set the scene, so they told us the setting of the poem. The setting of the poem is during the night, and uh, in there is a, there is a house inside of a forest. How could I know this from these words? The mullet door and the forest ferny flow. Okay. So then again, <clears throat> show you the presence of ferns or of the grass further suggests that uh, the forest has grown wild around the house implying that it hasn't been cared for. The inhabitants may have been absent for a while, or maybe they are dead, okay? So then, because here, line number four tell me, tells me that the forest ferny floor, okay? So f the floor of the forest is ferny. It's full of grass. And this grass, this... We're spreading everywhere, even to the door, even over the door of the house, even up to the windows of the house, and even to the inside of the house. Okay, so Hadil Al Ashab Dagal Mansamin Kulagwal Arabic, okay, is creeping, is spreading everywhere. Okay, windows, etc., which is an indication that this house is not cared for for a long period of time. Which is an indication of maybe number one. The people who used to live inside of this house, they have gone to a travel, maybe, okay, and they will come back again. Or two, maybe again, the people who used to live inside of this house, they deserted the, the house completely. Okay, hijra lil abad. Or number three, the people who used to live inside of the house could be dead by now. That is why that house is full of grass. It is uncared for. It is full of ferns. So the ferny floor of the forest is spreading everywhere and no one is caring for the house. The house is deserted. The house is abandoned. No one is here. So the traveler's question, is there anybody there? Opens the poem with a sense of urgency. Okay, there is an urgency, there is a quickness. The poet made this question to begin the poem with because this is the most important question to the traveler. Okay, why is he here to deliver a message? How could he do?
delivered the message with knock on the door and asking this question. Is there anybody there? If someone will say yes, if he will get a response, so he will deliver his message and he will go back to the same place where he come from. Okay, so this question drive the poem with urgency. Okay, it more makes the poem to move with urgency. Okay, so if he is knocking at the door in the middle of the night and asking if anyone is home, he must have a compelling reason. Definitely, it, just imagine if any one of you is in the place of this traveler. Any one of you, if he or she will choose to come during the night to a lonely place and to knock the door of a deserted house so definitely definitely you have a very logical reason you have a very strong powerful reason you have a reasonable reason you have a compelling reason okay so you must have something very important very significant which drives you which makes you to come to such a place during the midnight okay so That re now, now the job of the readers is now all the readers are encouraged to read on in order to find out what his errand entails, what is the journey of that man. So, we as readers now we have a curiosity, we are so curious to continue on reading the poem. So I say that Walter Dillamer was so successful in drawing our attention from the beginning of the poem. Okay, he was really clever in uh, and successful in making us attentive and making us to draw us to draw our attention to go on reading the poem because he started this poem with a question without answering the question. So we, the readers, we will find it so important, so compelling again to go on to read the poem. To read the other lines, the, to, the, to read the rest of the poem, to discover out, to find out, to figure out what is the answer of this question. Is there anybody there? What is this place? Who is that man? What is his, his message? So we want answers. We are curious to find out answers for all these reasons. So that is why we will need to continue on reading the a rest of the poem to find out to discover out the answers to these questions if there will be answers okay so and definitely to find out what kind of response the man the traveler will get if anyone will respond to him if anyone will answer his knocking on the door and his question is there anybody there what type of response what type of answer what type of people who will answer him okay so in these opening lines, the first four lines, Walter de la Mer, the poet, uses two devices to contribute to the effect of the woodland scene. Now, the, the, the poet will waste no time, okay? He started from the beginning with the most important question, with the uh, very important idea of the poem, which is the journey, okay? And also, from the first beginning of the poem, from the opening lines, the first four lines, he will start using poetic devices, he will start to use uh, even the poetic devices that he is using are traditional, conventional ones, okay? The first one is used with this word, which is a figure of the speech, which is called, uh, named or known as onomatopoeia, okay? Chant. The horse of that traveler was in the silence, okay? Now, when that man reached first to this forest, silence was killing Quietness, serenity was everywhere, were everywhere. So this silence was only broken by the knocking of the door from the part of the man and his question. Okay, now again, why, while he knocked on the door and he asked his, his, uh, he asked his question, now we will again live in full silence. So the silence will again be broken by the sound of the voice of the horse, the sound of the horse while that house was eating, was champing, was champing the grass, was eating the grass. So in this poem, there is a, a game of, of uh, chase and release, okay, of chase, uh, chase and go, okay? 
يعني مثل دا نلعب حويدة اوكي This word is between what? This game is between what and what? It, it is between silence and sound. Sound and silence. So silence, then broken by the sound of the traveler, then broken by the knocking of the door, then silence. Then silence was broken by the sound of the champing of the grass from the part of the horse of that man. Okay? So back to the figure of the speech or to the poetic device used by the poet here, which is, as I said, even the poetic devices he used in this poem are traditional. So the first a traditional conventional poetic device used by the poet in this poem is the word chant, which is an onomatopoeia. And onomatopoeia, who knows what does this mean? Onomatopoeia. Mm -hmm. Doctor, can you tell me? Onomatopoeia. Telephone onomatopoeia. Okay. So please, uh, so as to not to waste our time and to be just like our clever poet in not wasting the time of the poem, we are not to waste the time of the lecture. Okay, so onomatopoeia, please, means uh, the, the meaning of the word is derived, is taken from, or is understood from the sound of this word itself. Okay, the meaning of the word is understood, is derived, is taken from the sound of the word itself. Okay, just like when I say a click, you know, the word the click, The word is derived from the sound. Okay? click. 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 Okay? So, uh, smash. Smash. Okay? Then, splash. 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 The meaning of the word or the word itself is derived from, from the sound of this word. Okay, so chant, okay, who was Okay, chant. Okay, how to just imagine the, the sound of, of a horse that is eating something. Okay, that horse was champing. So th this is an example of onomotopia. Okay, then. In the following line, he used another traditional, conventional figure of speech or poetic device that is alliteration. Alliteration means, alliteration means yes, Hadil? Yes, the repetition of uh, of the Consonant sound. Uh, okay, repetition of what? The, repet uh, the repetition of. Uh, repetition of. Uh, yeah, repetition of what? A carol shino. Repetition of words. Of, uh, yeah. of, of letters. Of letters. What letters? I know. I know. Consonant. Uh -huh. Sound consonant. Cons Consonant sounds. Okay, good. Yes. So, uh, then, um, you know, hint, Samir, and the Shijab Yes, the repetition of uh, uh, there is uh, first uh, ferny flower. Uh, uh, the same uh, sounds. Okay. Same sounds of the consonants. Consonant sounds, more sounds of the consonant. Okay. So thank you so much for Hadil and Hind. Okay, so alliteration is the tabuli, is the repetition of initial consonant sounds. Okay, again, alliteration is the repetition of initial, يعني كما the beginning of the words. Okay, يعني الحروف الأولية, الأصوات الأولية, sorry. The initial consonant sounds. So أكو عندي two conditions حتى يصير alliteration. مو بس إنه repetition. I repeat what? Initial and consonant sounds. The sounds must be in the beginning and the 
Okay, so it is the repetition of initial consonant sounds at adjacent or neighboring words. Okay, so this is what this is an example here of of alliteration. Forest, fair, floor, fair, and fair, and fair. So, you know, then this alliteration is you know of these devices. Now the onomatopoeia of the word chant, okay, makes the sound of the horses grazing stand out vividly. Okay, uh, this means that who told you that there is a how a horse inside of the poem? Okay, we were only aware of the traveler. traveler. Okay, so anyone who will break the silence. We will be aware of that creature, okay, of that character. So, up to this extent, we were only aware of the presence of the traveler because he was knocking on the door and asking, is there anybody there? We never known and we were never aware that that man had a horse, okay? How could be, we started to be aware of the presence of the horse, it is through his or it's champing of the grass. من خلال صوت المضغ مالت الجراس. Okay, we were aware of the presence of the horse, and we know now that this man had a horse. Okay, so this is gained, and we are uh, aware of the presence of the horse from the use of the uh, onomatopoeia of the word chant. Okay, then. In contrast. لا انتم ماخذين المرحله الاولى المرحله الاولى ماخذين المقدمه للادب انا متاكد موجود بالكتاب مالك اوكي سو اني اني واي اني هاو اوكي سو ان كونتراست ناو وذ وذ ذا سايلنس ذات از ايفري وير ذات فولز ذا وود ذات فولز ذا فورست اوكي وي ار اوير ناو اوف ذا بريزنس اوف ذا هورس ثرو ذس فويس ثرو ذا ساوند اوف تشامبينج اوف of of the uh, alliteration what is the function of this okay then uh, now this alliteration of the first ferny flow creates a softness that my max that imitates that represents the texture of the overgrown forest uh, now this alliteration has has uh, you know, a variant, you know, uh, various functions, so many functions. Number one, look at the, uh, you know, the, the sound that is that is repeated. It is fair, which is a very light, soft sound, okay? Just imagine if I use the word, if I repeat the, the sound, de, okay? That which is so much forceful, so much strong sound. That sound, I want to give you a, a strong, you know, inclination, a strong understanding of something, a strong, you know, passion or emotion of something. But here, the poet cleverly again had used, had repeated in his alliteration, a very light, soft sound, which is the fa, which is to indicate, to refer to you, to my Mac, to imitate, I mean, they haki, the softness, of the silence that is inside of the forest okay so everything is soft silence is everywhere there is no need to repeat the da for example sound which is a very powerful strong one because everything is quiet everything is serene everything uh, silence is everywhere everything is soft okay and also number two the alliteration gives you another function, is of another function, which is to tell you that the forest ferny flow, repetition of the fa, fa, fa sound for three times to tell you again that the ferny flow, the grass, the ferns, all the forest are spreading everywhere. They are repeated and repeated and repeated. يعني الحشائش والدغل they غطي كل مكان inside of the forest, even the house, the deserted house itself. Okay. So then, if we move to the second part of this poem, and a bird flew up out of the turret. Okay, turret يعني tower. 
so there was a tower there was a chimney over the house on the roof of the house okay and uh, because of the knocking of the door because silence was everywhere because we are now in the midnight so please use your imagination okay for this to understand this idea okay silence was everywhere because we are in the middle of the night in the midnight and there is nobody inside of this house there is nobody inside of this forest okay so silence is everywhere and if something okay killing deadly silence okay so this is now because okay no one is speaking there is no one is talking there and now the traveler will come to to break the silence here okay so that because of the sound of the traveler because of the sound of the knocking on the door and because of the sound of the horse that was chomping the grass and we are in the midnight then the birds will be scared and they will start to flew up out of the turret so this means that we uh, birds are building their nests they inside of the turret which is an indication again Okay, and no, that house is a deserted one. Madame the bird started to build its nest inside of the tower, inside of the chimney of that house. This means that in the bird okay, it is secure, fully secure. Okay, so this means that that house is deserted. That is why the bird is not afraid of anything. That is why the bird has built its nest on the tower on the turret of that house okay so again and the bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head it was traveling over the head of the traveler because it moves towards the the origin the source of the sound which is of course definitely the traveler okay and he the traveler the man smote again smote upon the door he started to knock the door more forcefully than before, more powerfully than the door. He started to knock before then. He started to knock the door for a second time again. But this second time knocking is more powerful, more forceful than the first time. So he smote. Smote means more powerfully, more forcefully, more strongly than before. Upon the door, look at the repetitions. Uh, repetitions, of course, are used for emphasis for the sake of emphasis to make an idea emphatic when i want to uh, make you focus on something i'll repeat this i will repeat this so that i will i want to tell you that i am emphasizing on this idea and this line or these slides because it is important okay so i want you to stop and think to uh, consider it in the in your minds to give it a second thought that what i am repeating in my analysis is something important that is why i'm emphasizing on it so the poet has done here the same thing okay he will make the 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 idea of knocking the door again through two repetitions he will tell you that the man will knock on the door yes more powerfully than before more strongly than before and he will tell you that he will knock the door again not only again but a second time okay so and you will ask the same question is there anybody there he said exactly the same question is repeated without changing even a word which is again to give you a hint that the poet is emphasizing on the significance of the knocking of the door and the importance of asking this question so these lines now these four lines again from you know line five to eight okay these lines that i have re just read they do bring some sort of response to the traveler's question but not the one he was looking for okay so you know when while the the man knocked on the door for the first time and he asked his question for the first time he was wanting he was willing for someone to answer him he was searching for a response okay so no one answered him from the inside of the house so there was a response okay but it was not the response that he was searching for it was not the response that he was looking for he wanted someone from the inside of the house to answer him 
while he said, is there anybody there? But the response didn't come from those people inside of the house. They didn't come from the inside of the house, but it came from the bird that it flew. Okay? Then, right, which is again, as I said before, it gives you the indication uh, that that bird was disturbed from its nest by the knocking on the door of the man and by his asking this question with such a loud voice during the midnight, during the uh, serenity, during the silence that is everywhere, that is covering the whole setting. Now, again, I'll repeat on the fact that a bird has been living in the tower of the house, which is further uh, gives you an indication and impression that this place is abandoned and is deserted and no one is living there. Okay, so again, it gives you also an indication that nature has begun to take over the human home, making the space its own. As if, and I'll repeat, as if there was a war between the natural world and the human world. So inside of this forest, inside of this house, who was the victorious? Okay, because the ferns, because the grass is spreading everywhere, even inside of the house, is in, even uh, over the door and the windows of that house. So uh, then even the bird was building its nest over the house of the humans, okay, uh, of those humans. So definitely this is to tell you that now as if nature was victorious, nature was winning over the human home, was winning over the human world. So as if the poet is telling you that, who is the winner in this war? It is the natural world who was more powerful and strong than the human world, okay? So the whole space, the whole setting now does belong to nature and to the natural world, not to the human world. So we have grass everywhere, we have trees everywhere, we have a ferny flow, we have a ferny flow everywhere, and also, Plants are going everywhere, and also we, the, the only living creatures here that are responding to the man are only birds, which are again belonging to the natural world. Okay, so no humans are in this house or in this place. So this might again contribute to the increased urgency with which the traveler repeats his knocking on and his question because no one answered him because no one from the inside of the house responded to him so the now the traveler felt a more urgency more uh, he is now more urgent the question is now more urgent than before so that is why because he lives he believes in now the 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 urgency again of his question more than before he will repeat the same question again with knocking on the door more strongly than before, okay? So in this case, Dilemma uses the verb smote here. He uses this verb. And this verb really is very important for many reasons. Reason number one, this smote means powerful, means strong or strongly, okay? Which is again, as we said before, to give you an indication that uh, now the traveler will knock on the door more strongly than before. This is one. Two, this word, this mode, is a very traditional and conventional word, okay? Which is an indication telling you that this poet and this poem is a traditional in everything. Because, again, it is a Georgian poem. So, uh, traditionalism and conventionalism is everywhere, not only in the themes and not only the techniques, but even... <clears throat> in the words that were chosen by the poet himself. So, number one, it means strongly to tell you, to give you a hint that the traveler will knock on the door more powerfully than before. Two, it is a traditional and conventional word, which is an indication that this poem is a traditional everything, even the choice of words. And the three, this word, this mode, is belonging to the Middle Ages language to the medieval language. It is an archaic word. It is no more used in modern English. Okay? Okay? So, which is again to tell you that I will, I am the poet, I will take you, my readers, my students, to live back in time during the Middle Ages.
okay why is that because even if you have noticed something in the picture that i have shown you at the beginning of the lecture of today even the castle even the house that was in the picture is following the structure and the style of medieval houses of medieval castles okay and even this word this moat is a medieval okay yani that is a medieval word that is belonging to the language to the english of the middle ages okay so to tell you again to give you an indication that i will bring you back to the time where people were really living believing in supernatural elements to the time and the place where people were really believing in what in gothic elements in horror elements where to the place and time where people were really actually believing in they have their beliefs in believing in what in ghosts spirits phantoms and supernatural elements okay so that is why this word is very important for the three reasons that i have just mentioned okay so now he will start now knocking on the door more powerfully than before which is to show that the traveler is knocking with a great deal of force he repeats his first question exactly is there anybody there without changing even a word okay now even more desperate for someone to answer him now he is so desperate he is so much looking willing wishing wishing for someone to answer his question even more desperate than the first time when i have a question and i ask this question for the first time i am not that desperate okay because i expect that someone will answer me will respond to me but when i discover that no one is answering me no one is responding to me and the same question okay but i am now more desperate okay now when i have a question and i will ask you if any student will answer me that's it we will leave the question okay so but if there is no student who will be able to answer this question i will repeat the question but i am now more desperate more okay بالمره الاولى اسالكم واذا احد جاوب جاوب ما جاوبته خلاص بالمره الثانيه اوكي لما أحد ما حد يجاوب بالمره الاولى بالمره الثانيه اسال هسه اريد اجابه بعد اكثر من من المره الاولى اوكي انا اكثر بدي ادور على اجابه ومتحمس انه اكو احد يجاوبني اكثر من المره الاولى ممكن مرات حتى تشوفون اذا ما حد يجاوب بر بعد السؤال الثالث اوكي بعد المره الثالثه ومحاوله الثالثه الرابعه اقول لكم والله اللي يجاوب هذا السؤال الى مثلا درجه او درجتين اوكي ذس از ذا سيم ايديا هي ذس از ذا سيم نوشن ذات از هير ان ذس بوم اوكي وايل هي اس ذا فيرست كويستشن ذا كويستشن ات ذا فيرست تايم He was not that desperate because he was expecting that someone will answer him. But when no one answered him, he will repeat the same question with more desperate, with more willing and wishing for someone to answer his question. Now, look at this very clever choice from the side of the poet, which is line number seven, this one. I will highlight it so that you can refer to it. Okay, line number seven. And he smote upon the door again for a second time this line so many ideas this line one line only really has so many functions first it is to do with with the fun the three uh, functions of the word this mode that we talked about okay now also this line if you notice is look just look here use your eyes it is the longest line here Okay, it is the longest line here in the lines that we discuss. Now, this line, if if you notice, okay, let me highlight this line again. Okay, this line, which is the longest line, line seven, please, ah, for the other one, line seven extends beyond the others. Yeah, it is longer than the other lines. Okay, so that we discussed before, or that are in front of your eyes here okay so it is not the longest line in the poem no and two 
or the first part and the second part of the poem. Okay, it is the longest line here. Okay, so it is longer than the other lines. Why is that? What is the idea here? What the poet wants to tell you behind this? It is telling you that this line is uh, now it takes a longer period of knocking. So this means that the, the man was not only knocking more powerfully, but even was knocking the door longer than before. For a longer period of time than the first knock. بقي دق على الباب مو بس أقوى وإنما لفترة أطول من الفرست نوك that is why شوف يعني a very clever poet in, in fact indeed that is why he made this line to be longer than the other lines to give you the idea that the man was knocking on the door for a longer period of time and again so the repetition as I said of the action is emphatic which is when I repeat again and a second time when I repeat the knocking when I repeat the question this is for the sake of emphasis. لما أعيد وأكرر شيء هذا لغرض التأكيد عليه أركز عليه. Okay. So Dilamer, the poet, uses not only again. مو بس استخدم كلمة again in this line. Okay. حتى يأكد. In case the poet imagining this, <coughs> he said to himself, just in case that my readers had forgotten. That this man had knocked the door for a first time. So I will remind you that this was not the first knocking, but this is the second knock. Okay, this is another time. So he will tell you that he will knock the door again and this again. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. He will tell you a second time. Okay, so. That is why the poet does, doesn't want you, the readers, to forget that in numbering, this is the second time the man, the traveler, was knocking on the door. Okay, so he wants to draw your attention to the repeated knocking, to the repetition of the knocking on the door, and to tell you that this is the second time he knocks on the door, and looking for an answer to, the, to, the, to his question. It also, this line also, this repetition also suggests that the traveler's attempts are useless. He repeats knocking on the door and asking the same question because his attempts, his trials are useless. محاولاته أن يحصل على response or an answer from anybody there were all useless, in vain, بدون فائدة. So more knocking doesn't produce the effect he wants. Why? He will keep knocking and knocking on the door, but he will gain nothing because no one will answer him the unchanged repetition of the opening question in line eight as i said the same question is asked without even changing even one word okay so this unchanged repetition this same repetition of the opening question in this line line number eight okay again hi of the question, the importance and significance of the question, because the traveler wants an affirmative yes in answer to his question. He is so much uh, having urgency, is so much and the second the question, okay, exactly the same first question repeated for a second time, okay, with more powerful knocking, with longer period of knocking, he just is so urgent, so willing for someone to come from the inside of the house while he will say, is there anybody there to answer him with yes, but do we have a yes? The poet will tell you, but, and once he told us but, lacking, we definitely know that we definitely understand that no one will answer him and that man will not have, <coughs> will not win the answer that he is looking for. So because but in a grammar, you know, it means the opposite to something that was mentioned before. Okay, so but means that no one answered him, as the poet will tell you openly and exactly, but no one descended to the traveler, no one descended from the stairs. 
اوكي ما حد نزل من الدرج نو ون ديسندد فروم ذا سكند فلور تو ذا فيرست فلور تو تو اوبن ذا دور اند تو ميت اب وذ ذا ترافلر حتى يلتق الترافلر او تو انسر هيم او تو سبيك وذ هيم اند نو هيد فروم ذا ليف فرنج سيل نو ون نو هيد اوكي ليند يعني بس وايق فروم ذا ليف فرنج سيل ذا سيل ذات از يعني عتبه ذا سيل اوف ذا ويندو عتبه الشباك Okay, which is covered with leaf. Okay, مغطى بأغصان الأشجار. Okay, nature is more powerful than that. Nature is spreading everywhere. So no one descended to the traveler to meet him or to speak with him or to answer him. And no head leaned. Okay, from no one from the leaf fringed cell, no one from the window, no head from the window leaned over. يعني بس مجرد وايق and looked. Into his grey eyes, into the grey eyes of the of the traveler, where he stood perplexed and still, because no one answered him, because no one looked at him, because no one leaned at him, because no one was looking at him, and no one was talking and meeting up with him. So that man stood uh, uh, frozen in his place. Okay, uh, he he was perplexed. And still, he was you know standing still in his place, just like a frozen. Person and he was so much confused because it is now the second knock and the second repetition of the question and still no one is answering him. So all these lines now from the, here the last four lines in this stanza or this part, okay, now highlighted in front of you, okay. All these lines from but, okay, and downwards, they tell you the <coughs> you the readers that. What doesn't happen in the poem? Now, again, the poet is so clever. He will let you use your imagination. He will let you dive deep inside of your minds, inside of what will happen even without being happening. راح يخليكم تشعرون وتشوفون بالimagination مالكم تتخيلون. اللي ممكن يصير بدون ما يصير اوكي ريلي ا فيري كليفر اند كين اند بروفيشنال بويت اوكي يو ويل اسك يور سيلف ناو وات اف سم ون ويل انسر هيم اوكي يو ويل اسك يور يور سيلف اند يو ويل جو تو يور ايماجينيشن تو ايماجين وين سم ون نوكس ذا دور اند يو ويل اسك از ذير اني بادي ذير شي يصير ديفينتلي سم ون ويل ديسيند to you to answer you to meet with you to speak with you or before opening the door someone will look from the window to you before opening the door someone will lean over and look in, into your eyes to see who is that person who is knocking on the door and asking this a question so really a very clever poet a very clever technique which lets you the reader <coughs> okay to imagine What, uh, what's happening without being really taking place or existing or happening? Okay, so the this is a expectation, as the expectation of any one of us. Why, when we knock doors, when we ask questions, what we expect is that someone will emerge from the house to speak with me, or at least out of the window and acknowledge my, his presence. That there is. Someone present inside of that house, okay, to tell me that yes, I am here. I will come to open the door. I am looking at you. Yes, I will come to answer your question, and I will open the door for you. But neither of these things happen. Okay, the reversal of his expectations, the reversal, يعني, of our expectations as readers, okay, confuses the traveler and confuses us. Why there is nobody there? Why no one is answering door for him? And why there is no one at least leaning from the window and looking into the gray eyes of that traveler? So that man now momentarily from asking from speaking. He is confused now. And we, the readers, we are also confused. If there's nobody inside of the house, 
if there is no one who is answering the knocks and the questions of that man, so why is he here? What does it bring him here? Shouldn't he jab al-adil al-mukam? Okay, so the last lines focuses on the absence and negation. Hi, wakizul ali. How can you have come with a hava? Okay, the language of these four lines focuses constraints. مفهوم شنو؟ of absence and negation الغياب والنفي اوكي؟ شلون؟ I'll give you اوكي؟ no one no one this is what? absence no one and it is also negation ونفي بنفس الوقت no one no one descends to meet the traveler and another example of absence and negation is and no head leans over the cell Look, leans over the window to look at him. So here, everything is is you know with the focus of the language, the language of these lines, majorly and mainly negation. There is no one and no head. Then because. There is no answer because no one met him, because no one looked at him, makes you, the reader, to imagine them happening. You start really to imagine that there is somebody who will open the door or will look at him from the window in your imagination, in your inside of your minds. It is difficult to talk about something not existing without conjuring up an image of it when it is existing. شنو ممكن يصير لو احد فاتح الباب او مباوع من الويندو؟ We have to use your our imagination to imagine what will happen so that if it so again I say that the poet is so clever he uses the language of these lines to focus on absence and negation and also he lets you to swim in your imagination to dive in your imagination to imagine what might be happening even without being really happening. Okay, so then the traveler becomes now so confused, so perplexed. Uh, for a while, he stops his, his attempts to make himself known. Uh, now, meaning that the silence and the stillness of the wood observe even him for the moment, which is again an indication that. The natural world is more powerful than the human world to the extent that <clears throat> not only the grass, not only the leaves are creeping, not only the ferns uh, of the forest floor are creeping, are spreading everywhere, even the birds over the house, the, uh, you know, the grass is everywhere, even inside of the house, over the windows, over the door of that house, but also nature is now more powerful than the traveler himself. Okay, because there is no one who is answering him. So he stops and now silence of the natural world was again victorious, was again more powerful than the sound of the human world. Okay, مَرَّ اللُّخْ سُكُون وهدوء عالم الطبيعة كان أقوى وتغلب على الصوت أو عالم اللا سكون اللي يمثله in 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 man or in the traveler okay so now uh, the last point that i want to concentrate on in this lecture is this pay attention to me please you remember that we have not mentioned or the poet has not mentioned the name of the traveler and we don't know anything about the traveler what is his name? Uh, does he have a family or not? Children, wife maybe? Uh, relatives? Okay. Uh, from what a place he has come? We don't know. Okay. Then, what, what's he doing here? Why is he here? In this lonely place during the midnight? Why is he knocking on the door and no one is answering him? Okay. Then, we don't know all these details about that traveler. But, surprisingly enough, 
The poet has gave us only one thing about the description of that man, which is that he has eyes that are gray. Antana bas the color of his eyes. Ayuna rasasiya. So, definitely, when I don't give you, okay, any any description of when now I will come to you. Okay, in a lecture room, and uh, you will ask me, for example, about a student from from third year. Okay, you don't know that student, or I will bring you a visitor, a traveler, someone who traveled from the third year to your lecture. Okay, and I will tell you that uh, I will not give you the name of that traveler. And I will not tell you that he comes from the third year. Okay, and I will tell never give you any description of that student. But I will tell you only one thing about this description. I will tell you that this traveler, this visitor has gray eyes. So definitely, at once, immediately, you will understand and you will notice that this detail is very important is very significant okay because it is the only detail of that man it is the only feature or characteristic or trait that is given to us by the poet de la main so definitely we should stop here to think this description in or this detail only in the description of that man without mentioning his name or anything him uh, anything else about him but only this thing okay so this detail i want you to know first that this detail isn't necessary to the story okay concerning the development of the course of the story or the development of the narrative Okay, so then we should ask ourselves what may this will make us wonder why it might be included to the uh, you know to the to the story if it is not necessary to the development of the story of the course of the story. So we will wonder, we will start. Okay, so. Now, the gray color is an achromatic color. Hi, لازم نعرفها. So, خلينا نجي قبلها على شغلتين. Now, this detail is important for the following. ليش the gray eyes or the color gray is important? Following reasons. Number one. Okay, culturally speaking. Okay, إذا نحكي على culture. Culturally, حسب الثقافة. Culturally speaking, okay, the gray eyes, the gray color of eyes, is some. Okay, I'll repeat again. Culture number one. Culturally speaking, the gray color of eyes is something is uh, uh, sacred to the British people. Okay, فشي مقدس عدوما. That is why they believe, and they say that, that is mentioned in the history books, okay, that the the eyes of King Arthur, اللي هو مؤسس الدولة البريطانية الحقيقية, Arthur were grey, and the eyes of Queen Elizabeth the first, اللي هي من أعظم من حكم بريطانيا, okay. Elizabeth تعرفوها أخذناها العام بالإليزابيث دراما وقلنا how much uh, to a great extent she was a clever and she settled really the bases for 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 modern England for modern Britain also they say that her eyes were great and even the eyes of Queen Elizabeth II who is now the are also said to be great so Culturally speaking, the gray color of eyes is a sacred color to the British people. This is one. Two, 
the gray color in literature is always a symbol of death okay دائما اللون الرصاصي بالادب يرمز للموت because it is the color of ash لانه فشي احترق ورماد صار كانه مات symbolically speaking okay so uh, its color is gray it is also the color of uh, dead trees during winter الاشجار من تموت بال بالشتاء يصير لونها gray رصاصي okay gray leaves يسموها يعني اغصان رماديه so definitely all in all we say generally speaking the gray color in literature is a symbol of death and it seems that because no one is answering the traveler it seems that we are living in a place that is full of dead persons as i said at the beginning of the poem that no one is answering this man okay although he take it on his efforts to come to this place during the midnight to come to a secluded abandoned deserted house in a deserted forest during the midnight okay to what to to deliver a message to them but no one is answering him which is an indication that maybe those inside of the house are dead persons this is why we have used the gray color which is the color of death number three and more importantly أهم واحد بالأسباب is that gray color is an achromatic color هو لون مو أساسي okay يعني ما يجب نفسه إلا it comes from a mixture of two colors okay so uh, now uh, achromatic means that this color has no actual color ما هو لون حقيقي مو أساسي it is composed from black and white هذا يجي من 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 المكشر اوف يا لونين ابيض واسود. The traveler's eyes now here being in between black and white هسه عيونه جراي يعني لا هم وايت ولا هم بلاك. They are from a mixture of black and white so they are gray. So his eyes are in between in between black and white. So his eyes might represent a meeting point of two states for the dead. Even this man, because he has gray eyes, he is in between. black and white. the world of the living and the world of the dead. Okay? جاء من مكان احنا ما معروف جاء من الورد اوف ذا ليفينج على منو على هذا الديزرتد هاوس بتوين هو حلقه الوصل بتوين ذا ورد اوف ذا ليفينج اللي هو جاء من عنده اند ذا ورد اوف ذا ديد اللي جاء عليه هو ار ليفينج انسايد اوف ذا هاوس سو ذات از واي سيميلر تو هيز جراي كلر ايز ويتش ار ان بتوين بلاك اند وايت سو ذس مان اولسو از ان And in, in the course of the poem, that man was able to come close to the world of ghosts, of the spirits, of phantoms, of phantoms, of supernatural elements, and the world of the dead. But he is also definitely a representative, who is a representative, a symbol of the human world, that is the world of the living. Okay, so uh, by this, we come to the end of the lecture of today, and inshallah, we are to continue and to persevere on the to go on the uh, full explication of the other lines of the poem uh, along with the themes and symbols that are used by the poet in this theme in so uh, please if you now the floor is yours if you have any question addition or commentary <laughs> 